Hail and well met, my fellow Earthlings. Today we're going to be talking about lenses. And lenses are like mirrors, except with some different crap going on. That I'm sure will be confusing at first, but I am here to help. And I'm also here to try to get this PowerPoint started. There we go. So lenses, the first telescope designed and built by Mr. Galileo Galilei, he used lenses to focus light from faraway objects into Galileo's eye. His telescope consisted of a concave lens and a convex lens, and looks something like this. So here we have the outer piece of the telescope. Here we have Galileo's eye. This is actually a picture of Galileo's eye. He had incredibly long eyelashes. Here's the convex lens that we put at the bigger end. And we put a concave lens at the other end. Now light from the faraway object enters this convex lens and it's going to be refracted towards the thickest part of the lens. So here's a thicker part of the convex lens. So that means this light, when it comes through, is going to get refracted in towards the thicker part, like so. Then it's going to hit the concave lens. And since light rays are always refracted towards the thicker part of the lens, on a concave lens, the thicker part is on these edges here. So that means the light is going to get bent back outwards and go into the eye, like so. So that's how telescopes work. And Galileo figured that out hundreds of years ago because he was a smart cookie. So concave lenses are thin in the middle and make light rays diverge or spread out. So here comes the light. It's going to hit that lens and they're going to diverge. They're going to spread out and they're going to leave the lens, something like that. So if the light rays are traced back using these dotted sight lines, they intersect at the focal point behind the lens. So just like in mirrors, here we have a radius. If we continue like this slight radius, we continue it, it'll make it actually a big uh, circle. And the focal point, just like for mirrors, is going to be half of the radius. So the focal point for a concave lens is back here. Actually, all of the same equations, the 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di, all those pertain the same exact way to concave lenses. So no new equations, just new ways to draw stuff. So to reiterate, here comes the light. It's bent out towards the thickest part of the lens, and it all diverges. So light rays that come in parallel to the optical axis diverge from the focal point. So that means they start spreading out from the focal point. So they start at the focal point, and they just get more and more spread out as time goes on. The light rays behave the same way if we ignore the thickness of the lens. Just like we can ignore how thick a, uh, or how bent a uh, mirror is, we can just draw a straight line for concave and convex lenses too. Like so. So this thin line in here, that's just going to be our lens. So if we ignore like all this extra stuff, which will usually just confuse us. And I'm sorry, my red-green colorblind friends, I forgot to change this. This is an F over here for you people that are colorblind. So light again, diverging. So instead of drawing that extra little bit in here, once it hits the center line here, the center of the lens, it refracts outwards. And just as we're using the whole thickness of the lens to begin with, if we're just using a line, the light rays that come in parallel to the optical axis still diverge from the focal point. Nothing changed. It just makes our drawings a little easier. So here's an example. The first ray comes in parallel to the optical axis and refracts from the focal point. So just like in mirrors, it's going to come parallel to the optical axis, hit that center line, and then go through the focal point. Except for in lenses, that ray is reflected back towards the focal point. In this case, the ray goes through the lens and through, or sorry, it goes through the center of, of the lens and continues on through the focal point. So this time our sight lines are going to be the ones directed back towards the focal point, those dashed lines. 
So the second ray goes straight through the center of the lens. So center of the lens is going to go right through this point right here. And it just keeps going straight. Not bent at all. The light rays don't converge, but the sight lines do. And where do they converge? Right there. So a virtual image forms where the sight lines converge. So we're going to have a virtual image right here. Now this is different from mirrors because when images were formed in mirrors on the same side of the mirror as the object, we had real images. In this case, since you can see through lenses, the virtual image is whenever we have a, an image formed on the same side as the object. So everything's the same, but just slightly different. So there's our new image. Sight lines cross there. Since we started from the tip of this guy, where they converge is going to be the tip of our image. So we get a real image. I'm sorry, a virtual image. And you can see here this virtual image is upright. So now it's your turn. So it's time for you to pause and draw your own stuff. The first one, the example I did, I had the object in between the focal point and the lens. This time I'm putting the object over on this side. So pause, draw, because I know you're all very diligent people who like to put a lot of effort in because you love my motto, what you get out is what you put into it. Emphasis on the it. So welcome back if you actually did pause. So this is where your image will be formed. First ray comes in parallel to the optical axis, hits here, refracts off, but if we draw a sight line, that sight line goes through the focal point. The second line just goes straight through the center of the mirror. They cross right there, and we get an image right there. The convex lenses are a little bit different. They're shaped more like eggs rather than hourglasses, and the focal point is back here instead of on this side. So convex lenses are thicker in the middle and focus light rays to a focal point in front of the lens. On concave, it was behind the lens. Now we're doing in front of the lens. The focal length of the lens is the distance between the center of the lens and the point where the light rays are focused. So very center of the lens to the focus, that's our focal length. So here's a little schematic. Here comes the light, and it bends in towards that focal point right there. So light rays that come in parallel to the optical axis converge at the focal point. And this says focal point in here. I'm sorry, I thought I changed all my reds, but apparently I didn't. So they come in parallel to the optical axis, and they all converge at a single focal point. Here's an example with my handy-dandy trusty candle. And again, we can ignore the thickness of the lens and just draw this center line in here. And that's where the light rays are going to start to converge. So the first ray comes in parallel to the optical axis and refracts to the focal point. Parallel to the optical axis through the focal point. The second ray goes straight through the center of the lens, just like last time. Right through the center of the lens. The light rays don't converge, but once again, the sight lines do. And where are they going to converge? You have to extend some stuff here. You got to extend both of these lines back until they cross somewhere. So this time we're going to get a huge image. So this time it's a virtual image again because it's on the same side of the lens as the object. And it forms where the sight lines converge. Now it's your turn. Once again, pause, grab a ruler, draw straight lines, draw this object. So welcome back. Here comes our first line. It's going to hit the mirror, go through the optical axis. Second line straight through. Oh, but look, these guys do converge. So our image is going to be formed over here. This is going to be a real image. And how you can tell real images from virtual images uh, physically, if 
I had a huge convex lens and I had an object on the other side and I can actually project this image on a piece of paper, then it would be a real image. So real images with lenses are formed on the opposite side of the lens as the object and you can project those onto a screen. So this is how movies work too. So when the movies go through the projector, they're actually upside down, but when they're flipped over, they're right side up on the screen. It's also how your eyes, well, your eyes work a little differently. You, the object is naturally straight up, but on the back of your cornea, it's upside down, and your brain actually flips it right side up. So thanks, and for further info, I have these couple links here, which I will include in the description of this YouTube video. So thank you, and print the notes, yada, 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 and I'll see you in class. I thought the PowerPoint would be it, but I decided to throw a little problem in there too, since we have some time on this PowerPoint. The first thing I give you is a little lenses cheat sheet, so you can use this when doing problems. So it gives you the lens type, it gives you the focal length for convex uh, lenses. Focal length will always be positive, for concave it will always be negative. It also gives you information about each one of the variables. So here the object distance is always greater than if the object's greater if the object distance is greater than 2f and di is between 2f and f the magnification will be a smaller inverted image and it will be real if the object distance is between double the focal length and the focal length then the image distance will be further than two times the focal length and it will be enlarged and inverted and it will always be real. If however the object distance is between the focal length and the lens then di, the absolute value of it, the magnitude of di is going to be greater than do so it's going to be further away from the mirror than do is. It's going to be enlarged and it's going to be virtual. So that means it's going to be on the same side of the image as the object. I'm sorry, it's going to be on the same side of the lens as the object, the original object is. Now for concave lenses, uh, DO is always going to be greater than zero because it's, we don't have to worry about the focal length because the focal length is on the opposite side of the lens. So the absolute value of the focal length is greater than the absolute value of the image distance, which is greater than zero. So the image distance is always going to be in between zero and the absolute value of the focal length. And also, the image will always be smaller. It's always going to be smaller for concave lenses, and it'll always be virtual. So that means it'll always be formed on the same side of the lens as the object. So a little cheat sheet for you. Now a quick problem. So an object is placed 32 centimeters from a convex lens that has a focal length of 8 centimeters. Where is the image formed? It also wants to know if the object is 3 centimeters high, how tall will the image be? And what is the orientation of the image? So we can use our cheat sheet to get a, uh, an idea of where this is going to be formed. So an object 32 centimeters from a convex lens has a focal length of 8 centimeters. So the object distance is bigger than the focal length and it's also bigger than two times the focal length. So we'll go back to our cheat sheet real quick. So we're talking about this line right here. So we know we're going to have our image distance is going to be in between the focal length and double the focal length. So it's going to be between 8 and 16 centimeters. It's going to be reduced and inverted and it's going to be a real image. So first we're going to do part A, where is the image formed? You always want to write down your knowns and your unknowns. We know the, Im the object distance is 32 centimeters, we know the object height is 3 centimeters, and we know the focal length is 8 centimeters. But we don't know the image distance or the image height. So we are going to use the lens equation, which is the same as the mirror equation. 1 over f equals 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. And you can either plug your stuff right into here, or I like to solve for di, and you get something like this. 
So then we're going to plug our information into the problem. DI equals 8 centimeters times 32 centimeters over 32 minus 8, and you get an image distance of 11 centimeters, which we know to be correct because we said that the image was going to be between 8 centimeters and 16 centimeters, and 11 centimeters is obviously that. So it's 11 centimeters away from the lens on the opposite side of the lens from the object, which means it's a real image. So if the object is three centimeters tall, high, how tall is the image? So we're gonna use a magnification equation to solve for the height. So we already know using our little cheat sheet that it's gonna be smaller, it's gonna be reduced. So we use our magnification equation we're going to solve that for HI because we can just forget about the M because we don't have any information about M. So we're just going to use this part right here. We're just going to use this part right here. We're going to rearrange for HI. Then we're going to plug in what we know. 11 centimeters is the image, or negative 11 centimeters image distance times 3.0 centimeters divided by 3.20. The negative sign comes in because of the negative sign right here. And you plug this into your handy dandy calculator and you get a negative 1.03 centimeters. Now the original object was 3 centimeters high and we know from our cheat sheet that it's going to be smaller and 1.03 is definitely smaller than 3. And part C is easy. Since there's a negative sign before the image height, it indicates that the image's orientation is inverted. I swear that's it for this one. Have a good afternoon, evening, morning, study hall, wherever you're doing this PowerPoint podcast at. Thank you. Bye.